Good morning everybody. Hope everyone's doing great. Thank you so much for all the cards and gifts. We really appreciate it. And I just wanted to do a quick video here about a couple of different things. Um, several of you have contacted me and have said, you know, we've driven by the Kingdom Hall or Assembly Hall and it's still in use, so I don't know what is going on. So I just wanted to clarify just a few things. And, you know, Mike and I do the best we can, you know, to um, get information out there. And, um, yeah, we make mistakes occasionally, and hopefully we can correct them when it's brought to our attention. Um, just wanted to mention a few things here. Now, I had mentioned the Salisbury, North Carolina Assembly Hall in our last nail and coffin. And I was asking if anybody knew, because it was only a rumor. And um, several have found out that it is just a rumor at this point. It is still in use and it is not up for sale. You know, but we did not put a nail in the coffin for that because I was only asking because it was a rumor at that point. Now, we are going to take a nail out of the coffin for this one. This was in Memphis, Tennessee. And, you know, I appreciate all of you helping and you know verifying this stuff for us because like I said we want to make sure you know we're correct in all of this this particular one um, somebody drove by it and we discovered that this is an old property listing from when the witnesses bought it from this theater and the person that you know told us about this actually you know drove by and she said there is no sign um, theater sign and there is no for sale sign the witnesses are still using it so you know like I said we want to you know get these correct as best we can now um, also I wanted to mention Canada several congregations we've mentioned in Canada now I was reading from the list from the Canada uh, charities um, government uh, pages and you know a lot of the congregations said revoked well thank you everybody you know several sources within those congregations said no we're still up and running and we haven't heard about our congregation closing so it's like okay I want to clarify this then so I went back to the Canada charities um, site and I looked up what revoked or voluntarily revoked meant and I just want to you know read some of this to you okay revoked uh, registration as a charity or Canadian Amateur Athletic Association has been cancelled and the privileges that go with it have been taken away and they they're gonna have several definitions of revoked now those congregations don't have a specific reason why their charity status registration has been revoked but that's why I'm going to read this that it could be one of these many things the organization can no longer issue official donation receipts and is no longer eligible to receive gifts from registered charities Registration as a charity, or CAAA, is officially revoked when a notice is published in the Canada Gazette. Registration may be revoked because the charity, or CAAA, chooses to give up its registration, revoked voluntarily, does not file its annual return, or does not file it on time. So it's revoked for failure to file. Fails to maintain its corporate status revoked for other reasons is audited and found to be non-compliant with the requirements for registration now those are interesting because you know if a kingdom hall congregation or circuit does not maintain this charity registration you know that means they have lost the right basically to get donations they've lost their corporate status and it has found to be non-compliant compliant with the requirements for registration. So, you know, my goodness, you have that brings up even more questions 
of all these hundreds of congregations that do not have a current registration with the Canada Charities. Revoked as a result of an audit, registration as a charity or CAA has been canceled. We're following an audit of their operations. It was determined that the charity or CAAA ceased to comply with the requirements for registration other than failure to file. Generally charities or CAAs are revoked where there are severe cases of non-compliance or cases where there is continuous non-compliance. The next one, revoked for failure to file. Registration as a charity or CAAA has been canceled for failure to file an information return form. Now they have the tax forms within six months of the end of its fiscal year. So just failing to file, you know, their status. Okay, revoked for other reasons. Registration as a charity or CAAA has been canceled for failure to maintain its corporate status. And that's all they have on that. No explanation, no qualifying it. They just have failed to maintain their corporate status. Revoked voluntarily as a charity or CAA has been canceled at the charity's or CAA's request. So this would be Watchtower's request for, you know, to be voluntarily revoked. And it may be for requested for a number of reasons such as a lack of available resources, dissolution of the organization, a merger or consolidation, no further need for organization services. So, you know, there's your reasons, you know, why a congregation will be classified as revoked. Now, in editing this, I was telling Mike about this, and something else occurred to us. If this congregation is functioning normally, how can they be using, you know, taking advantage of their tax-exempt charity status if it is not current? This is illegal. Well, that's the that's the the problem here, dear, is that I don't think you even completely understand what's going on here. Oh, I understand what's going on. I just well, no, can't no, no, put no, no, it no, no, into no, words. No. See, what it is is that the rank and file sitting inside that kingdom hall still believes that they're a nonprofit organization, since they don't have that nonprofit status any longer in these particular congregations that means that you have now been relegated completely 100 percent to nothing more than a publishing corporation which means you Jehovah's Witnesses sitting inside those dumbass kingdom halls you now have the legal right to sue for wages think about it because if they're if they've lost their non-profits, uh, their, uh, yeah, their non, their, their, their tax-exempt tax charity status, charity status, and you're not a charity, you're no longer doing charitable work, you're working for the man. Think about it. Contemplate what this really means. You, Jehovah Witness elders in these congregations, you should now be getting paid a wage like all the other pastors in Christendom are doing. But see, the problem is, is that the Watchtower Babel crap society, you know, the governing idiots are not going to let these congregations know that they are no longer a non-profit organization. That means everything you do, you are now doing for a profit. So, the thing is, is can the governments now, in all of these different countries, it isn't just Canada, but can these countries now go in and start taxing this Kingdom Hall because they have lost their charity status? Are they going to have to start paying property taxes? And, you know, all of this. That's what it implies completely. You know, this is just a bunch of questions we have with this. So, you know, I want to thank the people who have said, you know, well, this congregation hasn't closed. You know, they're still up and running, you know, but they don't have a current, not you know, tax exempt charity registration with these countries. See now, no. See now, I I know what's going to happen. See, I know the Washtown Bible Crap Society so well that I can actually predict what they're going to do. 
See, what's going to happen is once this video gets up and the rank and file start questioning the elders as to whether, you know, their congregation is no longer, you know, tax exempt, Watchtower and the babbling idiots are going to come out with a letter to all the elders, or, or better yet, better yet, it's going to be in one of their precious little Watchtower magazines that say, brothers and sisters, even though we are no longer tax exempt, we want you to realize fully that you're still working for Jehovah, and your labor is free because you're working for Jehovah, and they're not going to, they're, they're going to continue to dumb these people down and not see what's really in front of their eyes. Well, I'll tell you what else they're going to do. They're going to tell their friends, instead of putting their money in these little boxes in the back of the Kingdom Hall so that they don't get in trouble, go to JW.org and there donate you go. through that because that is to the worldwide headquarters and, you know, their charity status doesn't matter with their congregation if they can get them to do that. Yeah, trust me, somehow, some way, those governing idiots and the slimy, board of directors... Slimy yes, governing idiots. And the board of directors in Pennsylvania have already figured out how to get around this, and it's just a matter of time before it's implemented in all the, well, the remaining kingdom halls in the country, or the world, gets this memo. Yeah. Because these guys will snake their way out of it. There's no doubt in my mind that these slimy bastards will figure out a way around this. Well, in fact, the rest of the video, when we go back to that, you're going to see that they tried to slime their way out of, you know, this court case and having to pay, you know, this poor abuse survivor, this minor, you know, yeah. from being abused, you know, by an elder. So, back to the video. So, you know, I apologize for any, you know, misunderstanding. And, um, you know, it's not that the congregation has closed. Every single one has closed at this point. But we still have to ask, why has Watchtower, you know, lapsed in keeping a charity, you know, a.k.a. congregation, current with its charity registration? So we'll see. We'll see what goes on with that. Now, just a little bit of a teaser for an upcoming nail in coffin. Um, we have information that the assembly hall in Bergen, no Norway, is up for sale or has just sold one or the other. And uh, we also found out that the Costa Rican branch is up for sale and I'm gonna put the link down to that video and you can just fast forward to four minutes and eight seconds and you don't need English subtitles to see that big ass for sale sign so now just a quick note here um, I'm sure everybody has heard that Watchtower lost their appeal um, in the state of California in the JW um, abuse survivor, a minor, versus Watchtower Bible Tract Society. Yeah, that's her initials. That's got real confusing when reading this because they kept saying JW, JW, but that's, you know, her initials. So, but I just wanted to hit a, just a couple of things because, I mean, this is like, what was it, 45, 44 pages. Um, and I'm going to put the link to these documents. I'm going to put it on our website and I'll put the link down below. But here on page two, about halfway down, by November 2014, Watchtower had not produced the 1997 documents. And that's what um, the plaintiff, the victim, was wanting, is those 1997 documents about this pedophile. And, uh, JW moved for terminating sanctions. At a hearing on the sanctions motion, the trial court offered Watchtower four days to produce the 1997 documents. Watchtower declined the offer and refused to produce the 1997 documents. And then uh, the last sentence of the paragraph says, After considering evidence, the trial court entered judgment in favor of JW and awarded her a little over $4 million. Um, in the next paragraph, it says, On appeal, Watchtower raises four issues. 
And uh, the first watchtower contends JW failed to allege proximate cause in her first amended complaint. And second, watchtower asserts its right of due process was violated. Third, watchtower contends terminating san sanctions were excessive because lesser sanctions may have been effective. Page three under the factual and procedural history, they admit in paragraph A that the organizational structure of Jehovah's Witness Church is hierarchical in nature. The organizational head of the religion is Watchtower. Authority floors flows downward from Watchtower to the lo local level of the church, which is made up of congregations. Watchtower is the head of the Jehovah's Witness hierarchical structure. Watchtower is directed by a governing body, which is comprised of a fluctuating number of elders. Watchtower establishes processes for the discipline of members accused of wrongdoing, wrongdoing and receives and keeps records of determinations of disfellowship or of reproval of individuals appointed by Watchtower and ministerial servants or elders. And then page four. You know, how can Jehovah's Witnesses deny this? Or how can, you know, the organization deny, you know, that this isn't true? Congregants are encouraged to bring problems to the elders to be resolved rather than seek intervention from outside of the Jehovah Witness faith. And we know that's true. In practice, when a congregant commits an act of wrongdoing, such as the sexual abuse of a child, that matter may be brought to an elder to be resolved. If the alleged perpetrator confesses, or if there are two witnesses to the alleged wrongdoing, then a judicial committee will be convened. Convened. So right there, they admit the two witness rule. You know, we've always known that. So you know, we've been hearing many Jehovah's Witnesses saying, "Oh, well, they've changed that. They've done away with it." No, they haven't. They haven't. This was filed December tenth, twenty eighteen. Okay, yeah, on page 8 is where they have the motion to compel the production of documents. And Watchtower refused. And they asserted, <laughs> gotta love this, they asserted the clergy pendant privilege. All documents received by you in response to the body of elders letter dated March 14, 1997. And there was a motion to compel. And they denied that because of the clergy, you know, client privilege. Gotta love this, because over on page 9 it says, J.W. asserted the clergy pendant privilege was not applicable because the responses to the March 14, 1997 letter made, were made with the understanding that they would be shared with others. So their watchtower is the one that broke the clergy, or er, yeah, clergy client privilege. JW requested sanctions be imposed in the amount of $1,680. So Watchtower broke that. So you can't claim, you know, clergy, what was it, penitent privilege? No. Nobody's buying that one. So thank you so much everybody for everything we appreciate all your help and like I said all the cards and gifts and um, we're gonna have to you know check I'm gonna have to check more closely on you know property listings and dates and um, but another spoiler alert for the upcoming nail and coffin is um, I've had a source from the area we used to live in, Central Arizona, and um, Keenum Hall there is being closed and put up for sale. So, anyway, stay tuned, and hopefully we'll get it done soon. So you all have a wonderful weekend. Bye.